Welcome to another edition of City Connections. My name is Jomara Ortiz and I'm sitting in for Steve Keim. Our special guest this morning is visual artist David Holland. He's native from Lawton, Oklahoma, and he will be sharing with us um, a little bit more about his artwork and his experiences as an artist in Oklahoma. Hello, Mr. Holland. Thank Hello. you for being with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Good, good. Um, you began taking art classes as, at an early age, I understand, and that sparked your creativity? I did. Um, my, my father was in the military and we moved around a lot and so uh, at one point he was stationed in, um, in uh, uh, Moscow, Idaho and he was teaching ROTC at the University of Idaho and so mm -hmm. uh, to give me something to do they uh, enrolled me in an art class there at the university so that's where I initially started uh, painting and um, they also one thing that they did for me which is kind of fun was they would buy me those little paint my number kits so I started uh -huh. out doing that and then took this class and was actually enrolled with a bunch of adults which was really kind of intimidating for a little kid but uh, it was really my first exposure to doing artwork and uh, really enjoyed it a lot so I kind of kept doing it throughout high school and then some into college Great. Now, what's your inspiration now that you're an adult? What's your main inspiration when you work? Really, right now, uh, cloudscapes are what I try to concentrate on. And being in Oklahoma, um, clouds are really something we experience a lot. And they're something that uh, I find a lot of beauty in. That's what I really try to depict when I, when I paint. Um, you know, I understand that there's kind of a threatening aspect to storms. But uh, that's not what I typically like to show. I like to show the beauty of them, especially storms uh, in the sunset hours when they're really reflecting all the colors of the, uh, the sunset. And they can really be beautiful. They're, I kind of think about them as uh, Oklahoma's versions of, of mountains because they're as huge and majestic as the mountains yeah. in Colorado. So it's something you know, that I really treasure looking at. And, I, one thing that I do is I go out a lot and I photograph storms. So mm -hmm. I, I don't really chase them, but uh, I wait till they kind of go by and then I go out with my camera and take uh, just literally, you know, between two and a hundred pictures of a storm as wow. it's developing. Uh, it's really kind of in the, another enjoyable part of it is just literally being there and watching the storms. And then I uh, take my photographs and look, look at, you know, I take them, put them on my computer and look through all of them. And then I'll pick out the most dynamic uh, shots that I've taken of a particular storm, and then I use that uh, as a source for, for my paintings. Wow, that's really amazing. Now, being in, in the heart of Tornado Alley, um, I think you had a, a lot of, of, <laughs> of work probably with different uh, settings of light, um, just like yeah. you mentioned, and storms going from severe to mild. Yeah, yeah. The, the storms that I like are the ones that are really distant, that have already kind of passed by. And so they're not, you know, threatening necessarily, yeah. or at least yeah. uh, I don't think that they look threatening. Um, they're sort of off in the distance. And um, the, I really like depicting the entire structure of a storm. So I, when I go out, I look for spots that I can have the complete view of the horizon from the horizon all the way up uh, you know to the top of the sky basically so when I take pictures I'm taking pictures of a whole storm and so that's what I try to depict so you can actually see the structure of a storm as it develops and um, yeah there's just so much beauty in storms so, it, so it's what I, I really love to do oh, that's really amazing and um, I know you're focusing on cloudscapes but you have additional work other series that you've worked on um, like the the torso series that mm -hmm. were inspired on mm -hmm. your travels to europe right mm -hmm. That's correct. and also the modern life series yeah. which is inspired on on the new family uh it's, it's really about generation mm -hmm. sort of speak where everyone is going at their own pace and it's right. just sort of uh yeah. It's <laughs> about uh, really the dynamics of modern life, really. So that's why I call it the Modern Life Series. And uh, for instance, this, this picture right behind me is um, when, when I was a kid growing up, our family would always sit down to dinner literally every night at 5.30 or 6 o'clock. And so everyone would talk about what happened during the day. And mm -hmm. there was no, you know, no instant media 
for people to communicate and yeah. kids weren't really all distracted. It's like, you know, when you sat down to dinner, everyone was focused on the family. And so the, the, net, the title of this piece is uh, The Last Family Supper because it's something that kind of, to me, uh, in a way, has been um, pushed aside a little bit by modern technology. Right. So in this particular right. image, in, this is like projected into the future. And so in front of each of the, um, the participants in this dinner, there's a television monitor and there's a place setting of a, a, a you know, the, the knife and the fork and the plate is uh, on the television monitor rather than the actual, you know, meal that they're sharing. So they're sharing the monitor rather than sharing the meal. So it's just kind of a, a way to use a visual image to depict that change that has right. happened in society. Right, it's truly amazing because we're all um, probably embedded on it and we don't even realize that's how mm -hmm. that's how we're living our, our busy lives. Yeah. And uh, perhaps it shouldn't be that busy, right? Yeah, and those changes <laughs> happen so right. subtly that right. you don't, it almost, you don't even notice that they're happening a lot of the times. That and is so, true. Yeah, and so that's one objective of that particular series of work is to kind of pinpoint those changes that have gone on um, and so, you know some things that that have been lost really um, you know in our lives or you know that that I relate to uh, as I was growing up that may have changed right. and kids kids might not have that perspective so it's kind of interesting to just kind of show those images to give them an idea of what what has been before maybe <laughs> <laughs> well thank you I'm sure they will appreciate it Thanks. When the time comes, I'm, I'm sure. And um, and right now, I think we don't have to go far away. I think uh, most of us are realizing too that we're too busy and that at mm -hmm. some point we need to slow down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. And um, I I understand that your work has been displayed um, at many art galleries throughout Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Um, and the most recent display you had was at the Governor's Gallery That's in right. 2014 and also at a downtown art festival in yeah. Oklahoma City yeah. last spring. That right. was, you know, right. just a couple of months uh, ago. Right. Yes, in April. Yeah. What, you know, such an honor to be able to display your work at the Governor's uh, Gallery. What can you tell me about that experience? It was amazing, really, just to think that my work was, you know, uh, okay enough to really be shown at the state capitol was just a thrilling honor. Right. So uh, it was, you know, just setting up in the governor's gallery, which is a really nice kind of intimate space. It's the mm -hmm. hallway that leads to the governor's gallery, and um, basically my work is on both sides of that hall. And then right next door to that is the press room where they have all the press conferences for the state of Oklahoma. So there's a lot of people who were able to see my work that went to those activities. Wow. And it was up for, uh, I think, almost two months. So there was That's a good, really good long period of time that it was up. Um, and one of the kind of interesting thing that happens when you go into the Capitol, of course, now you have to go pass through security. And mm -hmm. so you don't really think that artwork has to pass through, pass through security, but uh, when when I brought my work there, you know, I offloaded it onto a cart and we rolled the cart into the building and then that cart gets put on another cart and that goes through this x-ray wow. machine. So it was kind of interesting that even artwork has to pass through security. So that, That's amazing. We do not realize the times we're living in yeah. where we have yeah. to truly look into every little detail and make yeah. sure that there's no harm in anything. That's yeah. amazing. I never thought that artwork would b go through a security right, right. camera, though, but <laughs> yeah. that's really interesting. And the other thing about that uh, particular uh, <clears throat> venue was there's an artist who is really a huge inspiration for, for me, who is also um, Oklahoma-based. His name's Wilson Hurley, and he also uh, paints thunderstorms, thunderheads, and, and so his work has always every time I've seen it really inspires my work very much. And so he's got inside the Capitol, inside the rotunda, mm -hmm. rotunda there's um, four of his pieces that ring the second floor of the rotunda. And one of them is a thunderstorm, a big, huge, amazing thunderstorm. So he's, a, he's an amazing painter. And he also has uh, a huge, probably, I don't know, it's probably 25 or 30 feet tall mural at the wow. Cowboy Heritage Museum mm -hmm. that also is, is really part of my inspiration for the work that I do. So it's one of, the, one of the other things about the Capitol show that was really thrilling to me. It was showing my work in the same place where his work was showing. Right. So. That's, that's pretty, pretty amazing and it also means that you're such a great artist as he is. So that's, that's truly that's right. an honor. <laughs> 
Welcome to City Connections. If you're just joining us, my name is Jomara Ortiz. I'm sitting in for Steve Kine, and our guest this morning is visual artist David Holland. Um, Mr. Holland, uh, I understand also that you are a fellow speaker and mentor to young artists and um, artists in your in your field about about developing um, a career, mm -hmm. being an artist, but also right. about the business end of art. Right. Um, can you tell me more about that? How? What was your inspiration to yeah. to become a mentor? Um, one thing that I realized pretty early on doing art is that in order to make a living at it, uh, you really need to treat it like a business. Because if you're if you depend on it for your livelihood, then you have to make money from it. And yeah. so, you know, there's one thing making the work, but there's another thing selling the work. So you have to think about both of those things. You have to really devote a lot of time to being in the studio and producing the work, but you also have to think about the business end. One thing that really helped me tremendously, in 2006, um, I went to a seminar at the Quartz Mountain that was sponsored by the Oklahoma Visual Arts Coalition. Mm -hmm. There, and it's, uh, show, OVAC is the short name for that, um, but OVAC, um, they are uh, an organization that help artists become professionals at, at their occupation. Mm -hmm. they, they help you understand how to make a living at uh, doing that work. And so I went to a seminar that really covered just about every aspect of how you become a professional artist. And that's uh, what you have to think about to make a business out of it. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's you know one thing I want to pass on to other artists is uh, to, to think about that. Um, if you really want to make a living at uh, making art, then you really right. need to devote the time that it takes to promote the work. Um, you know, there's so many different tracks. Being an artist, you don't really know what track you want or right. belong to. You can go to arts festivals and sell your work that way. You can be in galleries and sell your work that way. Or you can be a graphic artist and work for another company. But you kind of have to decide a path. And there's no rule book to tell you which right. path that, you know, to follow. So um, the OVAC really helped me um, develop that sense of you know, how to make a living from it. And so one thing that I do to make a living from it is I've gotten into a gallery that represents me now in Oklahoma City. It's a Costa Strong Fine Art in Oklahoma City. Oh, great. They also have a Santa Fe location. And um, so once a, a gallery represents you, then they kind of help you promote your work a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't get into galleries, you can also sell your work just as an indiv individual to the public. And, um, and in order to do that, you have to figure out how to promote it. You've got right. to be able to take pictures of it. You've got to develop a portfolio to show people your work. And you have to do things like this interview right. um, <laughs> to tell people that you're an artist and that you have work available. So there's a lot of aspects to being an artist that, you know, sitting in the studio and painting, it's so alien to that business world. That, that you don't really think about that if you're right. only focused on doing the work. But if, if you do the work and you want to get it out there and make a living from it, then mm -hmm. you also have to think about the business end of art. So OVAC is a great organization that I'd highly recommend to any artist in Oklahoma who is uh, interested in making a living from it. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I think it's, uh, it's really great of you to share your experience and your knowledge um, and your passion for art with others and help them uh, get motivated and also find out where what venue would be most beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to know more about David Holland, you can visit his website at www.davidhollandartist.com. Again, uh, Mr. Holland, thank you for being with us this, uh, today at, on this segment of City Connections. We appreciate your time and uh, we look forward to having you next time soon. It's been my pleasure. Come visit in it. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you. I really appreciate being here.